Have you ever gathered so much momentum that you feel unstoppable? It's like nothing can stop you. You can go on and on and on for ages. And on the other hand, there are days, there are times in which it seems like you're stuck. You can't do anything. And you're applying Newton's principle of inertia, the third law of Newton, that an object won't move until it has a force that makes it move. So today we're going to talk about the power of consistency and how it's more important to be consistently imperfect than inconsistently perfect. And what do I mean by this? So we're going to get the whiteboard again because it's always a lot of fun when we get out the whiteboard. So this graph will be the consistently imperfect and this one will be the cons inconsistently perfect. So what's the difference, obviously? Consistently imperfect means you're not focused on getting it perfect every time, but you're focused on being consistent. So there will be days, let's say you start from scratch, you start over here, it's zero, and then you will do it well on the first day, but like regular well, not super well. And then on the second day, you will improve and then you will come over here. And then on the third day, you might not be as good as you were on the second. Maybe you did it like this. And then you may have an outlier on the fourth day. And then you keep going and then you have a bad day. And then you kind of grow back. So when you look at the trend, the trend is going up. It's still going up. However, if you focus on having only the perfect day, so maybe here in the first day, you didn't really try, so you didn't get it perfect. Oh, so now today I'm not going to get it perfect. Oh, today I got it perfect, uh, but tomorrow I didn't. And the next day I got it perfect again, but then I didn't, and then I did it two times. So this is your trend line and i know <laughs> i probably didn't draw this the best way possible um it probably gets better if you put more points to prove the point that i'm trying to get to but basically by being consistently imperfect you'll have more data points and even if there are days in which you get worse and there are days in which you might fall off a cliff for whatever reason, you're feeling sick, you didn't sleep well, whatever, but you're always trying to improve and to keep the momentum going because this is a crucial thing. Because otherwise, if you're here, maybe you'll get to one of these days. So I didn't do it. And then on the second day, you say, oh, I didn't get it yesterday. So maybe tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And then tomorrow becomes Monday. Monday becomes next month. Next month becomes next year. Next year becomes next decade. Next decade becomes next life. So if you're inconsistent, if you're trying to be perfect every time you do something, you need to know that it's impossible to be perfect all the time. So if you're not going to be perfect all the time, you're not going to improve as much as you could if you just embraced that you should do it over and over and over again and get the most reps behind the bar as you can. Because otherwise, if you just won't be able to learn as fast as you could, if you are consistently imperfect, and I'll use my own example now, I decided to have a super lavish idea. I don't know why I did it. I, I kind of, I kind of shouldn't probably have done it, but I made a challenge to myself that I'd get to 200 episodes by the end of the year. But the thing is, 
I did this when it got to about 50 episodes. So basically, that means that I have to put out one episode a day for the rest of the year 2024. And the thing is, lately I have been inconsistently imperfect, which is even worse than any of the two cases here. Lately, I got sick. I, a bunch of things happened that I haven't been able to record as much. And also, I lost the momentum. And like I said in the beginning, the momentum is the most important thing because when you are in the zone, when you're doing things every day, it's much easier for you to just go and do it. So if you're going to the gym every day, you already have that rhythm. You're already, it's like your body takes itself to the gym and you don't even think about it. And the same things happen with work or with creative work, especially when you are in that zone, in that rhythm, in that flow state, you don't even really need to think. You just go and do it and you get the best results because you aren't holding on to things. Things just flow naturally. On the other hand, if you're not in flow, if you're needing to constantly try hard, you will get a a uh, worse result than you would if you would get in flow and you will have to expand much more resources, be it in cognitive energy and physical energy. It's much harder and you get worse results. So it's the worst of both worlds. Whereas if you are in the constant getting a little better day by day, you never let yourself fall off for two days in a row then it's much easier to do the things that you want to do, the things that you put in your mind that you're supposed to be doing. So this ended up being also one of the reasons why I started this challenge with myself to pretty much put out one video a day. And now I, I'm done with the videos that I had because I did have a backlog of videos that I hadn't posted, but I've posted all of them. And now I really have my back against the wall. I really need to do new things. And this is the thing with me and I guess with many of you guys that we are overachievers and that we kind of got used to only really being able to work well when we get our backs against the wall. And I'm trying to change that and trying to live more in flow, live more with positive momentum and letting that guide me and help me. But I guess since I had lost the momentum, I'd have to get it anyways. So maybe subconsciously, this is the way that I know how to get into that state of momentum when you lose it is to just put an unreasonable expectation so that you have your back against the wall. And that it's like when you were in college or in school and you needed those deadlines. So if you have some project that you needed to deliver, you would always finish it at the last moment, or if you had a test, you'd study for it last moment. I did this and there were many days that I didn't really sleep the night before, like took a nap or something. And eventually I learned better tactics that got me better results with less effort or at least with uh, less suffering. So yeah, not less effort, but less suffering. And I think this is the key thing that we all want to avoid, right? Suffering. And going back here, another thing that's important to think about, well, this is the trend line, but it's not only about trends. If you think about uh, physics, for example, when you were learning about uh, the movement of a car, like it accelerates and then it has a negative acceleration, so it stops, that kind of thing. Each data point over here, if we made a graph, so let's say this is the position that they usually call S, and this is the time. So this is the position the car is in, right? So in meters and miles, whatever you, you want. 
So in each point, the car is in a specific position, right? In each moment. So we have the time here. But what if you wanted to know the distance that the car, the, the whole distance that the car went through? So, okay, this is not the best example, actually. I should have used speed here. Actually, it will make it easier. Because what is speed? Speed is how much you travel in terms of distance per unit of time, right? So here's the speed, then like here's like five and then 10, and then it goes back to five and then it goes to 15 to 20 to back to 15 and whatever. So this is the speed that the car is going. But if you get the whole area of this graph, what will you get? You will get the distance because you have here speed, that's meters per second. And here you have time, that's second. So meters per second times second, you can cut the seconds and now you have distance in meters. And for you, for those of you who aren't from STEM, you might be thinking I'm a complete idiot. What, what the hell am I talking about? Well, the thing is, when we're thinking of the speed in which we are doing something, in which we are improving, or you can think of speed as the output, the rate of how much you put out your work, how much value you put out into the world. You also need to factor in the time. So the longer you are putting this out, the more value in absolute terms you will have. So in this case, the value you can think about as the distance, but in the case of your output, it's how much value was perceived by the people. And if you think of the outcomes in your life as how much value you've put out versus how much value you've taken out of the system, you can think about it in monetary terms as well. So if, if you're consistently trying to put value into the system to help people with their issues, with their problems, you have a product or you just help you talk to them and you help them see things a different way, whatever it is that you do. If you do it consistently, you will be getting this area and this area, the larger you have it, the more goodwill you'll have from other people or, or you can think of it as positive karma as well. Maybe we could think of this as karma over time. So the more good things you do, they will compound. And likewise, if you do bad things, you will also have this negative karma over here that you'll have to get rid of or to at least compensate. So I think it, it's interesting to think of things in graphic terms and to remember that consistency is key and to understand why consistency is key. And it's key because quite simply, we need to keep that momentum. We need to keep that object moving, that car moving, if we think about the physics example. Because when we stop the car, we'll have to use the energy all over again to get rid of the friction, to make it move again. And it's just a waste of energy. If you're constantly going and then stopping, going, stopping, it's just a waste of energy. So think about this. Think about how you can keep your consistency every day. Oh, another thing that I'm doing as well in terms of consistency now, I started writing every morning. So I have four prompts that I need to write about. And I'm trying to write about 500 words per prompt and it goes like, 
if this was the last thing I ever wrote, what would it be? Um, if I could talk to my 90 year old self, what would he tell me? What's the other one? What do I wish I had learned sooner? And the last one is if I could talk to my five year old self, what would he tell me as well? So a bit of everything over there and trying to be very focused on the message and on the things that, okay, so not only on the message, but also on being consistent, because if you do something for 365 days in a row, you will get results. And the thing is, sometimes we don't think about it this way, but you will already do a lot of things consistently. You already take a shower every day, I hope. <laughs> you already uh, brush your teeth. You already drink coffee or tea or soda or whatever it is that you like to drink, hopefully water. So you do a lot of things consistently. If you are a person that plays video games for six hours a day, congratulations. It's not easy to be focused for six hours on something. So you just need to learn how to use that consistency into something else, into something that you want to achieve. And I always bring up the gym thing because I think many people have a hard time going to the gym. And even I sometimes have a hard time sometimes like it's not easy to be consistent with things, especially when they are kind of hard. But you already are consistent with things and you just need to transfer that ability of being consistent into the right things. And if you can do this transfer and you can keep the consistency with the right things, then you will get the results that you want. It's that easy. I mean, it's simple. It's not easy. But if you just change a little bit your mindset and you think more in terms of being consistent, even if you're not perfect every day, even if keeping the gym example, you go to the gym and you have a shitty workout, it's better than not going. And you really should go unless you're like really sick or you really have something that is a big impediment to going to the gym because otherwise just go, man, just go and it will be good for you. Even if it's not the best workout ever, it will be good. And sometimes you think it will be a bad workout, but you get there and it's the best workout in a long time. It happens. Sometimes it's more psychological than properly a physical issue. So let's, keep our consistency let's think about let's visualize where we want to go the people we want to be the habits they have and let's keep that consistency please that's what i want to see from you guys you are a rock star keep rocking keep rolling cheers